Welcome back to Bedroom Studio Magic. Today I want to talk about automation and what I think are the two basic ways to use automation in a mix. Obviously there are many, many, many ways to use automation in a mix. I'm talking the two general sort of ways, um, all-encompassing ways that I use automation in a mix and that I think most producers use automation in a mix. Uh, but before we get into that, I thought it might be fun to take a quick look at this Logic session because it's sort of halfway between uh, recording slash editing and mixing. And I talked recently in a blog about doing things out of order, you know, um, making automation changes or using plugins, doing mixing things during the recording session and why that might be a good idea from time to time even though most of the time it's good to stick to, to a, a particular workflow. Um, so you might see some um, some automation, you will see some automation. Um, you will see that this is slightly mixed uh, but in general this is the way that a session of mine looks right after I get done recording it and before I have fully mixed and mastered. Um, you see that all of my tracks are color-coded. They're all grouped together appropriately. There's very, very little um, automation at the moment. This will be littered with automation points by the time I get done with it. Um, but at the moment, it's pretty uh, basic. There's even still um, some tracks that have not been joined together. Um, not that that's necessarily the most important thing, um, but it looks nice later on. You see that there's tracks that are still muted um, that I haven't deleted yet because I haven't decided whether I want them or not. Um, but you see this is this is how things kind of look um, right right there between recording and mixing. Um, so let's get on with automation. Automation, if you are unaware, is the changing of one or more parameters of a plugin or a track over time. Uh, and the way that this looks is something like this. See these points, these uh, little nodes here? These determine uh, which value the, that parameter will be set to and what it will change to. So for instance, on this lead guitar part, you see that we are sitting at negative 12 decibels for this whole section. And then right here, it starts to drop and it drops six decibels to negative 18. Uh, and then as you look from the beginning to the end of the song on that particular track, you'll see several nodes determining um, what the volume in this case is over time. Of course, you can automate any parameter on any plugin uh, or the volume or the panning of any track. So that's sort of um, the first way that I like to use and that I think most people like to use automation. And that's to sort of make um, subtle or maybe not so subtle changes to things like volume um, or effects over time. And uh, when you do that, it's, it's typically gonna look something like this. You're gonna see these squiggles. Um, that's probably what most people think of when you mention automation when it comes to music production. Um, but the second way that I, in, in general, that I use automation that I, and that I think other producers use automation in general is to bring things into and out of a mix. All right, and so there's a couple of, of examples in this uh, session that I can refer to. The first is um, this drum group here. So this right here is all of the drums. We can listen to it. All right, there's some clicks and pops I need to take care of in there, but you get the, the drift. Um, this drum drums uh, group is what all of the drum kit sounds like together. And there's a part of the song right here where I thought it just sounded too upfront in the mix. Um, so what I did was I automated, and 
you can see it says bypassed right here. I automated this plugin right here, which is insert four. I automated it on, so it's not bypassed, and then off again, it's bypassed. So the whole song, it's bypassed. But for this one little section here, it is not bypassed, okay? So what that means it's, is it takes effect, and we can listen to what it's doing. Um, but the point of this is I wanted to show you this plugin here, it's lying dormant, um, waiting to be uh, enabled. And that happens right here. So you hear what it did there. It's a uh, you know sort of a telephonic effect by um, created by uh, using a high pass and a low pass filter. Um, to shave off a lot of the top, a little bit of the bottom, kind of pushes it into the back of the mix, um, gets it out of the way so that the other instruments can, can breathe and kind of poke through that mix. Um, but anyway, this is the, the second way that I like to use automation. So those are kind of the, the two um, basic ways that I like to do it. Um, you know, sometimes it's these subtle changes over time, just adjusting the volume up and down or you know, in some cases, the uh, the panning, you know, right here, uh, the this uh, vocal track pans um, to the center and then back out again. Um, and the other way is to bring things in and out of the mix. I'll give you one more example of this, this second way. So down here, we have the vocal group track. So if we listen to that by itself, it's going to be all of the vocals um, together. And here's what that sounds like. Call it karma for the things that I've done. All right, and, and so there's something similar uh, to what I did with the drums going on here, where I have a send uh, going to an auxiliary track called Delay that has a delay plugin on it, and that's right here. And I wanted that. Uh, uh, that delay to to be silent for for the whole song except for this one little part here so the vocal group is being sent at negative infinity decibels which means nothing um, all the way up until this point and then we automate up to negative 14 decibels and then back down again so that you get the delay on that vocal group just for this section of the song so here's how it sounds and then it's gone so um, this is just a second example of how you can bring something into a mix and then take it right back out again or you know vice versa you can have something in a mix uh, for the whole song and take it out for for a small section the point is there are really two basic uh, major ways of using automation in a mix subtly to kind of make um, slight changes over time and then more uh, abruptly to bring things into and out of a mix. Uh, so tell me how you like to use automation in a mix. I'd love to know. And what do you think of my um, overview of, of automation? Let me know. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about anything how I can be of use to you um, as a bedroom producer. Um, let me know if you like the video and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.